Welcome back to Hidden Power. This is a Pokemon podcast. There are so many ways to enjoy the Pokemon franchise. Today, we're going to be doing a deep dive on Pokemon speedrunning. This is an aspect of the fandom that is new to me, but today's guest is a world record breaking speedrunner and a successful Pokemon creator. In this episode, we're going to be learning about the mechanics of speedrunning. Other topics include shiny hunting, Pokemon ports, Nuzlocks, challenge runs, Pokemon Legends, ZA, and so, so much more. My name is Dusty Gogoat, and today's guest is is Pulse Effects. Pulse, thank you for being here today on the podcast. How are you doing today? Doing good. I had a lot of coffee, mm. fixed my sleep schedule just in time for this. Pulse, can you tell me who you are and what your background is? Uh, hi, I'm Pulse Effects. Um, I'm a professional resetter of video games, specifically Pokemon. But uh, if, we, if we got an official title, probably... Uh, Pokemon speedrunner. Interesting that you said resetter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you explain the, that? Oh I, my god. <laughs> that's so confusing. So uh, a reset is essentially when, uh, you, you know how like uh, shiny hunters do soft resetting and yeah. such? Uh, that's us when we don't have like good enough stats on our Pokemon or like we mess oh. up like too badly, like really bad RNG or something. Yeah. Mostly, but yeah. That, no, it, that makes sense. I've, uh, j just to put it in perspective, I've racked up, um, I think 20,000 resets on Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Oh Alone. my God. What is the goal? Is the goal to just like beat it as best as possible? I would assume that the fun is trying to outsmart the game in a way. It's like outsmarting the game and so more, more so competing with yourself to better yourself. Mm. in long run because like when you do these like sort of repetitions uh you eventually get a lot better at it to the point where uh your skill gap just raises but sometimes the game doesn't agree with that skill gap and yeah. you, you could spend years yeah years resetting for that like really good run and it just all falls apart i think that's if insane. i would say like a a safety point though uh the hall of fame oh nothing, wow nothing is safe that's nothing insane is safe. so like i honestly don't play i've got a lot of questions now i don't play <laughs> i don't play nuzlocks i know a lot of people do to me even just the idea of releasing a pokemon that i've bonded with is like something i'm just not willing to do because in my mind if i've bonded with it i want to keep it i understand the point of a nuzlocke is to um you know to actually have the stakes be higher to so the game is a little bit more engaging um but uh yeah for me I, I play pokemon i play pokemon for the the casual the, like I, I for me it's a casual experience and for me it's mm -hmm. a cozy experience right when i'm done working i want to sit down and play like i'm playing ruby version right now and there's a theme to the to my to my team there's a theme to my playthrough but it's like relaxing like i'm doing like an hour a day it's just chill and I get a lot of enjoyment out of that, um, but yeah, to, I'm so like like I don't know like what inspired you to start doing speedrunning? Man, because I'm trying to like uh, get into I'm trying to get into the mind of like the uh, of you right? Mm -hmm. We we met at PAX East in Boston uh, mm -hmm. a couple months ago, and I was like I I had never heard of the you. Worst my, piece my, of my life. Yeah, my my buddy my buddy uh, <laughs> he knew who you were. He was like, is that is that is that Pulse Effect? And I'm like, I don't know who that is. And then we, we ended up meeting up and I've been just so interested in speedrunning since then because that's something that to me isn't as popular as Nuzlocke's. It's, I don't know. I mean, tell me about this. Is it like, like when we look at the YouTube, Pokemon YouTube landscape, like where does speedrunning fall into in the Venn diagram between Nuzlocking and challenge runs and fan games? Like I'm trying to understand, I'm trying to understand where all, like how all this fits in, you know? that's it's the weird thing is it i i feel like it doesn't fit it, in. it's just and different it's something it's it's, it's, a, it's a fourth it's, p pillar it's like when you tell someone that there's a speed run for stardew valley oh would you God. believe that would you, would you i think i would i think i would believe that <laughs> <laughs> because there's a lot of yeah i, I would believe that mm -hmm. but that's insane it's it's just so out there that a lot of people don't recognize it for yeah. what it is and that it's like more than just the RNG that the game presents. Yeah. Because a lot of what people have seen are like clips of people just going 
and blowing things out of proportion because something really bad happened. And yeah. you know, rightfully so, everyone loves to watch someone throw a tantrum here and there, especially yeah. with speed running. And it sort of fits in that the the hyper analytic, hyper challenge nuzlocks that you yeah. see nowadays. We were there before that, <laughs> pretty wow. much. I would say okay. is like where you would sort of put it. And I think there hasn't really been a good, per like not 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 exactly a person to like sort of represent it, but more like. It hasn't been presented in a package that people understand it enough yeah. to where it'll get like sort of a mainstream draw. Yeah. And I, I've been lucky enough to fill that void as of uh, yeah. What is it? Twenty twenty three at the beginning of that. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So, yeah, maybe maybe uh, you can tell me a little bit more about yourself by explaining maybe your content journey. Maybe that'll help me understand kind of. Uh, where you're where you fit into the landscape of all of this hmm. so when did you start making youtube videos oh man that uh that goes a lot deeper than where it is now because a lot of my old content is it, yeah. it's just gone off the internet okay um, did you pri you privated stuff privated deleted all that stuff it, just stuff i do not ever want to look at <laughs> or reference again because we we were all that cringy high schooler you know sure sure um and so uh, a lot of this content journey started uh do you i, I assume you know uh people like hayden Shofu. yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh i was in that era Oh really? Way back in the day, yeah. Um, oh wow! I did Wi-Fi battles uh, oh. for in the Gen Four, Gen Five era. Yeah, we were like about to transition into Gen Five, and it was at the point where Gen Five started to come into reality with like uh, competitive Wi-Fi battles that I stopped, and it because I I'd been posting for like I think a year or two straight, and it just didn't feel like it was for me with um just my place in the community and i also just didn't feel like i was that great at it okay at that point and it, it took me a while um to really get my bearings again i had like gone to uh college wasn't really for me and then I started streaming on uh, a, a, a now debunked site called, uh, I don't know if you've heard, heard of Hitbox. No. Or, <laughs> oh So my you were God. live streaming on this site? What? So what, mm -hmm. what year was this that you were streaming? Because I know back, I mean, I guess it Eight was. Eight years ago? Was this, you're saying this is like Gen 6 era? I think around, uh, a, yeah, a little bit before Sun and Moon okay. came out. Okay. Essentially, and uh, a lot of the speedrunning folk were uh, shifting over to the website called Hitbox because it seemed like a really good like alternative for Twitch. Was Twitch okay? So Twitch did exist back then. It just mm -hmm. there was a different alternative. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I went to I I was like, okay, this is a good opportunity to like get off the ground. Yeah. And so I started on Hitbox. I got a pretty decent sized audience from uh, just doing a variety of things. Yeah. I'm a a big I, I love challenging myself and so okay i did a lot of like dark souls uh okay. gaming and this is making more just, sense mm -hmm. i don't like dark souls <laughs> oh I've, I've played them all beat them all okay so so much fun and <laughs> and so where i where, where i sort of go from here was uh, i had been a sort of a distant watcher of speed running uh watch folks like uh gunner maniac worcester very uh very big names in the community of uh, pokemon speedrunning generally okay and watching them just sort of plow through gen one with which yeah. is just a broken mess of its own just you know I, I was a viewer and i was intimidated and then eventually i took that step to where uh i'm well first i moved to twitch and yeah. then i took that step into finally trying my uh, very first speed run Still didn't click until I tried Pokemon Crystal speedrunning. Okay. And yeah, I, I feel like most content back then, like I, pretty much everything on YouTube started with gen, like the first, I think I guess at the time it was like four or five generations. 
and everything was very vanilla right everything was yeah. like it was like let's oh. plays right it was like the most basic stuff now mm-hmm. and everything kind of got ramped up but you're saying speed running existed even back then yes yeah um i think and it was tough the... to record yourself back then as well right like you mm-hmm. had to do it so i i was yeah i was a i was a lurker when it came to battling like battle content competitive pokemon and i was also a lurker but i would also offline uh, shiny hunt. I feel like I was really in the weeds mm. with the shiny hunting community back then as well. So, which is honestly, if you think about speed running like that, that actually does the way you describe that. I think that actually is a really easy. That's a nice way to think of it because it's like an imposed challenge, um, and you're just running the RNG right. Because mm-hmm. like I feel like I'm imagining speed running is like you. It's like a sport. You want to familiarize yourself with the game with your strategy and then it's the execution that gets really difficult because of the rng right Mm -hmm. i actually in one of your more recent videos you were talking about like uh i think it was like a computer generated like simulation of a of a run of a game like task yeah a task so what is that yeah uh so a tool assisted speed run is essentially when you're showcasing what a perfect run would look like from like the beginning to the end, but this is all from like the perspective of the person that's making it and like their base knowledge yeah. of it all. And so, uh, do you do you know how many? Do, do you know what a frame is? Um, like, oh, within Pokemon, like, like yeah, like frame? the shiny. Like, I I think I've heard of frames in the in the turn. It's like there's like a background clock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Explain so, it for the yeah. audience. I barely mm-hmm. know. I'm familiar. I've heard it before, but tell the audience. So, uh, wait, where's my game? I'm trying to, I don't know where my game is right now. I was going to pull out uh, Fire Red as an example. Okay. Uh, so, Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green runs at 60 frames per second. And because it runs at 60 frames per second, it is a, a frame-perfect game, which essentially... Something about your eyes. You can't actually sure, okay. see past like 60 FPS or something. I think so it our, makes it harder. Yeah, can't we only see like 24 frames per second or something? Something like that. Or I, that's what occurs so naturally. It's, it's weird. It's so complicated. Yeah. But um, essentially there are uh, a bunch of those frames. And so what a person will do and god this can take months to years yeah they play the game frame by frame until eventually they formulate that perfect speed run where you know how sometimes you'll win these fights based off of like getting the best you get a critical crit. hit yeah you get an you additional burn yeah you get a one shot constantly with that perfect run you're getting the the best possible stats on your pokemon you're getting yeah. the best possible uh, encounter rate on your Pokemon. You're getting constant crits. There's uh, the 10% chance to proc a Quick Claw constantly, mm. and it's just perfection to a T. Yeah, and it's it's a beautiful thing. It's very it's it's different from like a human speed run, but it's it's a cool showcase. That's overall. cool. Okay, so those are more. So are those for like practice or are those for entertainment? You really okay? So. For listeners, uh, <laughs> Paul just pulled out a toy, uh, a a coffee mug that looks like a toilet, and off off air he did tell me that he was gonna pull out his wackiest coffee mug. I did not expect that. I thought it'd be, I thought it would have like a snivy on it or something. <laughs> what the heck? I have like a whole like uh, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Uh, okay. I have like a whole well, that's Chewbacca not the death face. Star. Okay. <laughs> Where he's opening his mouth and you kind of like drink out of his mouth. It's so, it's so stupid. That's so Silly. funny. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, dude. <laughs> um, all right, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, right. So we, we got the announcement of Pokemon Legends ZA. Um, mm-hmm. I'd love to get your, get your reaction uh, of this. I mean, like, are you excited for this game? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. I... So I, I will say, did not enjoy the original X and Y. Okay. I, uh, after playing Gen Five, I ju- I just kind of realized how, it, like, kind of. 
I, I don't know if short-sighted is the word, but it, it just feels like it's lacking a lot in terms of like development of the story. The speed run is a pain. Yeah. And I just, I just, not a Gen 6 fan. Um, but I think Legends EA, because a big, I think Legends Arceus was my, like, is my like top three game. Okay. Ever. And you can speed run Legends Arceus? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the most complicated thing ever. <laughs> okay. Good lord. Um, but so you enjoy that game, okay? Oh, yeah. Big, big fan. I, I think it's... I'm working on a uh, video essay on it right now, and I, I, I've, I've gone through the script for about a month. If, if wow. that says how complicated it is, and usually scripting takes me m maybe a week tops. Okay give or take and I, i've just had to take a deep dive into it and uh I, i'm guessing you probably want to know like what that could pe potentially mean for like legend za if we compare it to our yeah i know definitely definitely and I, I think it's important to it's i think it's important to point out that like, i don't think the experience of legend za will be one-to-one -one for what we saw in legends rcs i think obviously the setting is much different i think the biggest thing is we don't know what what are the features that are going to carry over. I think right now it's very easy to be like, whatever's in Legends Arceus that we like that wasn't in Scarlet and Violet is going to be the defining factor. But I think there's a good chance that whatever the next Gen 10 game is, uh, like whatever the next core series generation game is, um, there we could see that a lot of the features from Legends Arceus that we enjoy uh, could carry over into the main series and then mm -hmm. so my question is well then what is that like what is going to be left over to be in za but then define the the legends games going forward um i think that's important to point out but yeah based like from where we're at right now in may 2024 right yeah like what what do you what are you what are you most excited for in legends za for honestly oh, for just for for just a regular playthrough, for just an appreciation of the game, an appreciation of Pokemon, but then yeah, but then also I, I about speed running. Speed running side. Mm. Uh, I think generally, because I, I man, I think I I nearly cried at like just going through the experience of Legends Arceus in general. Yeah. And I am excited if it's going to give me that same exact experience because it, it felt like you got the best catching system yeah. ever. Yeah. You got all these like amazing overworld Pokemon and then giving you something that's not just gym battle after gym battle and giving you the goal of either catching all the Pokemon or the goal of uh, the, the star system in Legends EA where you have to uh, build the Pokedex up by like catching Pokemon, feeding them and all yeah. that stuff. I want to experience more of that. And if it, they give me a lot of that, I'm just, I'm going to be a happy camper. There's Absolutely. a level of, there's a level of immersion. I think in, that was present in Legends RCS um, mm -hmm. that a lot of players enjoyed. I think a lot of people, I remember when the game came out, I had friends in real life, excuse me, I had friends in real life who told me like they just weren't a fan of the style. And I think part of that was like adjusting because again, I don't think I'm alone. I think a lot of people find comfort in Pokemon games, right? Mm -hmm. I think Pokemon, it not only has it been around forever, but I think it also attracts people who like consistency, people who like patterns, uh, people who like, you know, that type of, the shrug I, I don't, I don't know what the exact word is. Um, but, but but yeah, I, I have I know people who didn't like Legends RCS. However, I think when you go back to that game now, like that game gave me so much faith oh. in in uh, in renewed buy in in Game Freak's vision. Right? I I trust mm -hmm. like I trust. When that game came out, I'm like, okay, all is not lost. Right? The future <laughs> of Pokemon is not going to be BDSP. Not that those games are awful, but that is not the direction that I wanted. Right? Mm -hmm. I think I think there's still a ton of growing pains even with Scarlet and Violet. So. Um, but I'm, I, I think I got a little off topic. I think, I think Legends RC is, it, it gives you a level of immersion um, when it comes to the perspective of your main character. The fact that you have it's to like a nostalgia. Yeah, to that it, too as well. Like, uh, two years old at this point. Oh yeah, but I feel like crazy. it's like th there was a time 
in Pokemon before that game even existed. I think that's the type of experience that people have wanted for so long, right? Mm. Like in Gen 5, when they wanted to, when Game Freak wanted to make this game so edgy, right? The, the Gen 5 edgy, engine and the games and the story, I feel like it's so edgy, right? They're trying to, appe- I think they have said in interviews that they want to appeal to an older audience. Um, but the way to do it is really to just make a game that's more engaging. Absolutely. So I think Legends Arceus is that. But yeah, so what, what, features or you know yeah what features or gameplay mechanics do you think or or do you expect um and and are you excited for in legends za i'm expecting a lot of cinema a lot of cinema a lot of lore yeah and i want i want that catching system back because they 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 took a weird turn in pokemon scarlet and violet where uh running into pokemon is the most annoying thing in the world yeah and with legends uh arceus you can just run up to a pokemon like circle around it like even like touch them and then just chunk a pokeball at them and you're good and i I want more of that to where i i'm not like constantly forced into these battles unless i choose to i want more choice i want more choice i want more lore i want to be able to experience just the, the magic of Pokemon Legends Arceus again. Yeah. But with like a more completed Kalos experience, like make me love Kalos. I know. That's so true. I think there's a lot of fans of Kalos, but I'm kind of in the same boat as you. When you were describing let when you were describing X and Y, I got my, like I I I've tried to play through a a, a, a ver- I tried to play through um X version a couple months ago and I and I did put it down. And I think it's because I never, I never really felt like there was. This is stupid because I don't even care for a challenge, but it just felt like baby easy, and that might be because I don't know if it's the thing I'm also struggling with is the fact that I am getting older. Like I just turned thirty, and sometimes I feel like an old head, and I don't know if I'm justified in being like, oh, the games were better be- because of the two D art style, or if the 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 gameplay has because sh- the gameplay also shifted from the 2D art style to the 3D mm-hmm. games, right? So I'm, I'm not yeah. really sure what it is exactly. I do notice, like, I, I remember one thing that stood out to me in X and Y, just playing it back, was that every single NPC that I talked to would give me, like, an item, and 50% of the time, the item was, like, busted or completely unrelated or felt way too uh, just overpowered for, like, the third town, right? I'm like, why am I getting a life orb, right? Why are you giving me all yeah, of these, like, I'm busted TMs when there's no... You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think some of that is a symptom of what X and Y, of what maybe I don't like about X and Y. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think a part of, uh, w- did you play Gen 5 at all before uh, X and Y yeah. came out? Yeah. Uh, it, it took me a while to like hop on that train. I was a big uh, Gen 5 hater, but then I, I played it. I was too. Uh, I think later in my 20s and then eventually it just became my favorite game and i i love to that. see it go sort of a step backwards kind of hurt a lot yeah because it felt like they were it was sort of a shadow of what gen 5 was trying to be like they were like oh let's put a lot more rivals and just sort sure. of end up not developing them as much or just uh, yeah, the, we said there was. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. There's, there were like three rivals in black and white, and then in X and Y, they're like, "Well, what if you have five rivals?" Yeah. Right. And I, I think a lot of Gen Five criticism is what sort of affected it because we didn't know what we got at the time. Yeah. Which was a masterpiece, and a lot of the complaints I think were not. I, I, I'm not going to say unjustified, but they just didn't feel like it felt like we, we took a step back because of those criticisms. And one of the big ones was that, you know, Gen 5, I think they introduced like 152 Pokemon. Yeah. And you could only catch those Pokemon until the post game of uh, Black and White 1. Yeah. And by the time Gen 6 pops up, uh, now you are just Kanto 5. Yeah. is what I like to call it. Uh because like do you do you off the top of your head, can you yeah. name like Gen 6 Pokemon? 
that so there's very few out in the wild. Oh, that you can catch in the wild in Gen Six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there's there's uh, there's Skidoo, there's Pupa, there's I, I can name them. I, yeah, I can name them. There's a the base talent flame form. What is it? Fletchling. You can mm-hmm. get a Furfrow, Panjam, Hone Edge. I just played it, so I feel like I do know, but. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I find it a lot harder though, personally. Are, so are you are you are you trying to make the point that uh, the Dex is just so big and that most of the encounters are non Gen six Pokemon? Because that's a thing. M- more like that they tr- they filled it with a little bit too much Kanto nostalgia. I yeah, think, for our own. Good. I mean, they, they literally in X and Y, they literally give you a second set of starters. And it's the Kanto Pokemon. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a lot of that. Yeah. Pikachu is in the first route. Um, you can get, I'm pretty sure, can you get Butterfree and Weedle? I think mm-hmm. those are available. Pidgey's available. Um, Farfetch'd. Yeah, Farfetch'd. Is, uh, yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, kind of, I think what was happening was, uh, the, like, the timeline is in Gen 4, I think a lot of people were like, and, and a lot of critics were like, like Game Freak, you've done this before. This is your fourth Japanese Pokemon region. It's 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 the four like it's been ten years, and you have the same exact formula, and it's getting stale. And they and they actually did something really bold in Gen Five. Like I think it got a lot of backlash in the moment. Looking back, a lot of people appreciate it, but it is actually so bold that je, that a new Pokemon game came out and you couldn't get access to any of any of your favorites. Right? That's not how Game Freak operates now. Now they like. They they make sure those the Charizard has a new form right Pikachu is available right they make sure those things are in place, um and and you know they they cater to nostalgia with the regional forms, but I think at the time that was actually like really special and I think a lot of people appreciate it now especially people who grew up with Gen five games, mm-hmm. and um and so what, I think what happened because of the backlash of those Gen five games, they said all right, <laughs> let's just double down. And we'll give you we'll give you Kanto. We'll give you <laughs> these mega forms of all your favorites, right? We'll give mm-hmm. you this. I I think uh, yeah I think I think over the last ten years it's been a tough. It, it's been a lot of. It's been dude a decade of growing pains with Game Freak, which can absolutely which, you know we've d- we've talked about extensively on the podcast. Um, but I still think there's a lot of magic there. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, like I think I would argue. That uh, they they drove up the lore so much yeah. more recently, especially with uh, not Scar- not just Legends Arceus, but Scarlet and Violet. Beautiful. Had my favorite story. Yeah, of all I, time. I think I agree. I don't know if all the characters are my all are all. I don't think all of the characters are my favorite, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, the the lore aspect of the story, I think is is so good. The plot, would you call it the plot? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, I, for sure. I think I think is really really. Be, uh, do the mu- I, I can hear the uh, the area zero music in my head right now. That, so hype. Uh, that made me tear up. So hype. Since at the time. Um, um I, I do want to just maybe we can go back to speed running a little bit. I've mm-hmm. got a bunch of uh, I, I've got a bunch of um, hypotheticals that mm-hmm. are ideas that I've played with that maybe things that you know these are things that maybe could pop up in future generations, and I'd love to get your take on it and then um. And then maybe like how that could inf- influence um, speed running, but I do want to say before I say that, like I think I-, I am someone who really enjoys playing through games multiple times, and I see, and I think I'm seeing a, I'm assuming that that I mean that that, that is what you do, right? That's what speed running exactly, is. Yeah. You replay we, the game over and over again. We are the people that play it more than anyone else in the world. Yeah. And if you want a game to last, like, I wouldn't say cater to speedrunners, but like at least make it accessible to speedrunners. <laughs> yeah. Because growing up, I mean, that's all I would do. I would play through a game and then I would transfer my champion team to like another save file. Like I would beat let uh, Leaf Green and then transfer it to Emerald, right? That was my cycle. And as I've grown up, um, I have had less time to play Pokemon, but I've also played through the newer games less. And I think part, and I don't, I'm still trying to figure out what that is. If that's just that I'm an old head and I'm nostalgic, or if those games, I th- I think a lot, definitely the last couple, like five years, the last, the last games in the, in the last five years are definitely catered and designed to be played in a single file that is ongoing, right? With all of these mm-hmm. updated events that they have. 
mystery gift events, uh, online competitions, the raids, DLC, D- uh, DLC. They incentivize you not to reset your game. Um, so I think, yeah, yeah. I so my, my point is, I think, uh, yeah, I think the newer games. I don't, I don't have as, I guess I don't have like as much knowledge about how the like the game actually plays out because those older games, especially I think of Kanto and Johto in Hoenn. I'm like, I know beat by beat exactly what to do and when I'm supposed to do this and what's going to happen. Like I play them on autopilot and I think that's why I enjoy them. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to like, you know, say like I'm a speed runner, but because I take, I take my (laughs) sweet time. I'm not going to lie. I've been thinking this entire time. Like, you know, if you feel like you're on autopilot, you you could try a speed run. I probably could. But it's the speed thing. You get a different experience out of it, though. Yeah. I don't know if I'd enjoy the speed aspect of it. mm -hmm. But maybe. I I will say, though, you, you, you definitely have to be careful with that, though, because sometimes it can ruin your favorite game dude yeah it, yeah it did that for me with uh pokemon crystal because yeah. uh pokemon crystal man uh the, that game's a mess and a half uh sp- more so in speed running but also like it it, it also feels a little canto fight <laughs> to be quite honest <laughs> it um, is it definitely is i mean absolutely it's a sequel to the canto games mm-hmm. and uh, understandably so you know it's a it's a it's a thing of its time and yeah. generally uh you know i i used to it used to be my favorite game of all time and oh awesome i uh i speed ran it and i just the love fell away for me personally when it came to something like pokemon crystal just because of how you know a pokemon speed run route can make or break a game in a lot of different ways and when it comes to crystal there's a lot of cool tech and stuff but yeah. it's it feels a little too linear and a little in a way too complicated as well at the same time. That's um balance. if I'm remembering correctly, I'm pretty sure one of the toughest parts about a gen 2 speedrun is is it the it, the the second rival battle in Azalea Town, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um that and the RNG manipulations. Okay. Should I? You want me to explain? Uh, yeah, we can go into it a little bit. I'm not, for the for the listeners. I'm trying to be careful <laughs> of of your time, listeners. Yeah, no to, to not bore anyone who is not interested. Mm-hmm. But I do want. I'm I am curious. I want to learn about this. So uh, the thing about older generation, well, I think all games randomness is a concept, a concept that can be broken because a lot of these older games, uh, they run on what's called. Uh, a pseudo random number generator where it runs in a pattern Mm. and so uh when you find out how that pattern works you can exploit it in ways that are just absolutely insane wow uh one one amazing example is that in pokemon heart gold soul silver uh we go throughout the entire game just to uh, you you have to take a very specific path and by taking that very specific path and not letting up f- from that path for i think about an hour which is uh, awful but at the same time you know it it gets the job done you can manipulate uh two things uh one voltorb flip oh wow you can force the voltorb flip patterns to be the exact same solutions every single time Whoa. Which gets you an Abra to be able to teleport around with and a Dratini to be able to use uh, as one of your HM friends. And then the next one uh, would be... Actually, no, there's more. The lottery. You wow. Lottery so you can get a Master, master Ball or something? Ball yeah, that's free. crazy. Mm-hmm. Is is that so you can get one of the one of the beasts? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's Dude, well, where... for... Okay, yeah, finish Oh, so uh, as we're grabbing the Master Ball from the lottery, we then grab the radio, which we can use the radio channels. Yeah. Flipping the radio channels actually flips RNG at a consistent rate. And so by flipping it a certain amount of times, we can force the game to give us an almost perfect IV Raikou. Wow. With the perfect stats. Force it to 
jump to a location that we exactly want it to be, grab it in a master ball, <laughs> and then pass Pokey Russ over to it. No way, dude. And how long does that take? Because the yeah, how long does that take? Like like just hour? that aspect. Okay. That's think, worth yeah, it though for all of that. Oh, Hundred percent, absolutely. You know, I'm hearing you say this, and I'm and my the implications for me is like, oh, in my Heart Gold Soul Silver playthrough right now, I want to cheese Voltorb Flip to get a Dratini early, right? I want to <laughs> cheese this stuff just so I can use it for fun. You absolutely could. So do you? you do I mean, every game is that considered? You can manipulate shinies. Oh, dude. Yeah, okay, we'll talk after. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll talk after this. That's that's fun. So I, I mean, I so I guess I'm understanding that in speedruns you guys are open to using any sort of like glitches or whatever. RNG mm. manipulation is the is yeah. the technical term. <laughs> Cuz yeah, R RNG manipulation is not necessarily like a, a glitch. It's more of like your a bug, of, a feature. You're getting to No, it it's it's fully it's exactly how the game runs, but we dove deep enough to open the Pandora's box to That's know sick. exactly what we need to do for almost not not everything. Dude. You can't have everything be perfect, but you can make it to where the game is actually you know nice to you. <laughs> yeah. So how do you get the shiny Pokemon? Oh man. Uh. Pretty much the exact same way that you would manipulate stats, except you have to dive a little bit deeper yeah. and know your uh, secret ID and then your trainer ID. And then a, a lot of it, um, the way that a lot of these Pokemon games run, uh, more specifically the Nintendo DS games, uh, you if you start up your, do you remember when you did your first playthrough of the game? Of what? Like a hard, like hard gold, silver, silver or something. Um, no, I, I don't. I don't. I mean, I played it when it came out. I don't. Oh. I don't remember the first playthrough. I don't think I remember the first playthrough of gold, of like gold version. Mm. What, what What about like a latest playthrough that like really meant something to you? I mean, um, of like a any DS game, I would say. Of any DS game? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, uh, let's. Oh, how about this? Okay, yeah, in uh, Black Two, or maybe it was White Two. It was White Two. I don't know if that matters. It was White Two. It was like 2019, I think, and I got my starter. And then one of my first encounters was Shiny Purloin. So I used that as a shiny, uh, as a as a starter. So, because this might told, be part of what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So what if I told you you could replicate every single thing that you did on that very first playthrough? Yeah, that's by starting crazy. up on the exact date, the exact time. Wow. The, okay. Uh, and you did the exact same movements perfectly. Interesting. So you're saying each one of those actions affects whatever the, the whatever the uh, the 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 frame is. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I've seen. Oh, that's that's really interesting. It's a fun it's a fun little like bit of like Pokemon science. Would I need to know what I need to know all of that in order to replicate that or would I have to like would I have to know all those steps in every direction that I took to reverse engineer it or could I just mm -hmm. could you be like I want this outcome and this is how you get the outcome. So I would think of it as like a, a tree of possibilities because you could technically get that same exact outcome by doing something a little bit different yeah which, which is why you know we go through a lot of these like testing phases uh like um for example in pokemon black and white 2 uh there's this thing called a hidden grotto yes and so uh a hidden grotto has a 0.25 percent chance to give you a rare candy mm. we found out how to get that you just keep getting it 
If you're enjoying this episode, please consider supporting Hidden Power on Patreon or YouTube channel members. Right now, we have four tiers, and the lowest membership starts at just $5 a month. Supporters get access to our secret Discord server and help control the direction of the podcast. Supporters also get access to our archive of bonus episodes. Okay, so our Discord honestly is popping. We have other creators in there, too, which is yeah. kind of fun. It ain't just the three of us. We're discussing leaks when they drop. We talk about news. We'll be talking about how Soul Silver Art has, you know, just garbage takes. It's so it's much a fun. Place for us to connect. I'm in there every day. Also, we have revamped our merch store. So proud of every product that is in this store now. We have stickers, t-shirts, mugs, ball caps, right? The dad caps, these ball caps are embroidered. Look at this. It's literally an embroidered. So clean. You cannot get anything more high quality than that. I just got news. Do y'all hear that? Solbasaur says that he even <laughs> has his own merch. I'll talk for him. It's beautiful. Very cool designs. You guys should Very check it out. Japanese style. E even the front of the shirt has a unique logo. I'm getting one for sure. If you're invested in this show, invest in the show. Thank you so much for watching. And now back to the video. You, you can have unlimited rare candies. I love that. Mm -hmm. What about the, um, again, I'm really, I guess I'm just fixating on shiny hunting now, but this is, <laughs> you're not a shiny hunter, but like, uh, yeah, I also reset Am in I? heart gold, soul silver for, you might be, I think technically, but, uh, what if I told you I'm doing a shiny project. Oh, a, sh a, a, a speed shiny hunt, a shiny speed run, run. a shiny mm -hmm. speed run. Something okay. like that. All right. Exclusive. We got we'll, exclusive information. We'll <laughs> exclusive information on the podcast. I oh, love it. Love it. Um, here. All right. Let's switch over to these uh, these hypotheticals, right? So these are things <laughs> on Hidden Power Podcast for anyone who's listening uh, for Pulse <laughs> and not for us. <laughs> what we do on the podcast a lot is speculate. We like to think about fun ideas, ways to improve the series. Um, and I think I, I got three hypotheticals for you right here. Um that I think we've seen in the past Game Freak do to some extent, but I like I like to think, what if these were expanded and focused on in the next generation or, or whatever generation it might occur in? Uh, so, the again, in, in the lens of a speed run, right, every Pokemon has a unique attribute um, that can maybe overcome a certain obstacle or whatever, um, but, okay, this is the first one. What if every Pokemon got a new ability like a hidden like a hidden ability right i'm sure that was a huge deal um because that gives you a lot of new options right and it can kind of mm -hmm. reinvigorate the po uh, this you know these old pokemon i don't know what they would call it i feel like they wouldn't do it because hidden abilities are already a thing or they could just reshuffle abilities right i think we have seen some re some pokemon I get mean, new abilities yeah um I would I would think it would maybe it could be like a generational gimmick as well with like a lot like a trastalization where you change your type maybe you like that's cool your ability or something that'd be interesting that's really cool so yeah so my other idea this isn't even on the list but like one of the uh, a battle gimmick that I would love to see this is kind of just how I imagine it um, and it could have a different name but it's some sort of armor evolution or armor form and the in the reason why it's armor I mean, it's a cool idea, but the reason why I would call it armor forms or armor evolution is because it basically puts emphasis on changing a Pokemon's stat. So kind of like a held item, you could have like the helm form, right? Which would maybe give your Pokemon more, I don't know, I don't know, special defense or something, right? And now it's got this new form with the special defense boost. Um, you know how like Mega Evolution will just give like mm -hmm. a, a variety of stat distribution? That's kind of mm -hmm. how I'm thinking about it. Um, or like how Dynamax just pumps your HP up exactly. to ridiculous degrees. Exactly. And Terra Terrastalization is all about its type. So I'm like, we haven't really focused on abilities. I'm sorry, we haven't focused on uh, stats. But I like what you're saying where it's like, what if you just get this like epic ability, right? That'd be sick. That'd be cool. Um, what about, you know, I'm actually, I'm asking you these questions, but I'm actually wondering how much... These actually would change a speed run because a speed run is just a speed run, right? Like, it's not like these are being retroactively added. And you also wouldn't have any insight on whatever game these are implemented into, right? Like, you're not going to know the Gen 10 game, obviously, right? No, well, you wouldn't like, know we, that? We always try and take our guesses, but, you yeah. know. Yeah, there's so it, many variables. Like focus on other things, yeah. really. So here are the other two um, 
reshuffling stats just in general, right? Which is kind of in line with my idea, but we've seen in Generation 7 Pokemon get, like, complete stat bo- boosts. I feel like there was, like, 200 Pokemon in Gen 7 that mm-hmm. got stat boosts. I love that when they yeah. actually, like, boost up a thing because uh, I I also, um, just to, as a, a little hobby, uh, I'm very into VGC. Oh, great. That's awesome. Such a big fan of VGC, and I, I one I'm not sure how they're gonna ever top terrestrialization as a feature, but like if they do, then you know I'm I'm so all for it. But generally, uh, I would say it affects that a little bit more than it would yeah. affect the speed run unless there's a remake. Yeah, which there'll still be variables they, in that. <clears throat> Which it, it sort of did affect how uh, things change, because uh, l- let's take for example um, Diamond and Pearl, for example, uh, and Platinum. Yeah. Diamond and Pearl would use a uh, Chimchar for the entirety of the speed run, whereas uh, Platinum would use uh, Piplup, a l- little bit of Chimchar um, for certain people, but then BDSP came around. And so now they grab Chimchar, but then they also grab a Machop and then trade that for a uh, an Abra that, uh, fun fact, you get boosted EXP on for it being oh, a yeah. trade as well. I feel like I heard you say, point out that detail in one of your videos. Is that a common thing? Like you, you want to get the traded Pokemon for yeah, that experience uh, I- increase? Yeah, for uh, Ultra Moon in particular, n- nothing compares to Halucha. Yeah, that's what it was. Game. That's what it was, I think. Yeah. Mm. And so a lot of the time, you know, if we can find like a nice trade Pokemon, we'll be like, does this have potential? Yeah. That's always like a big potential thing because like, like I said, you get like the boosted EXP. Yeah. Which just gives you such a better Pokemon in general without having to invest as much resources and such and just gets way more powerful faster yeah or you just use a starter with you know it's always an option (laughs) (laughs) or you're like scarlet and violet where uh the entire map is riddled with exp candy to the point where you get level 50 before you even fight a pokemon (laughs) yeah that's crazy it's ridiculous that's crazy that's crazy here's another one um what if gen 10 recalibrates pokemon types so this wouldn't be like every Pokemon gets a new type, but I would, I'd wager to bet. I'm pretty sure there's like 200 Pokemon that, that very, like very, like, I don't know. I don't think you could dispute, could utilize a new type just because it makes sense, right? Like Mm -hmm. the first thing I always think about is like, why is Blastoise not steel type? It that literally has be, metal cannons really coming cool. out of its body, right? And it's an armored or like turtle. Luxray with dark type and electric. That, I that mean, seems to be pretty popular with a lot of people. I, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. People, people like. I don't. I don't agree with that one, but I. But yeah, <laughs> that's a super popular one. A hundred percent. I'd love to see it. Honestly, I would yeah. absolutely love to see it because I think there's a, and I think that's kind of where like regional forms come in because like they totally. bring a new spin on like old Pokemon and. They've just been constantly bringing back like brand new regional forms, and I'm I'm so all for it. I love when yeah. they reinvent a new an old Pokemon. Bring me a Wobbuffet. That's like <laughs> something something for that's my favorite Pokemon. By the way, is it really? Oh, I love I, that. I love Wobbuffet. Big I fan. Love that. He's just so so silly in the anime. He He's really just a is powerhouse. Wobbuffet's crazy. Are there Pokemon that are like that you think? Or maybe that you you're aware of Pokemon that show up time and time again to just be like great in a in a in a speed run. Yes, uh, there's Halucha has been the star of almost four games because it oh, showed really? up. Mm-hmm. Well, um, what makes so it so it, good is it is, is it the coverage of its like multi type move? Is it the fact that it? I don't know. It's um. For one, it gets access to Swords Dance, which is always, you know, the most busted thing ever. Sure, yeah. It has a ridiculous speed stat, and then its fighting flying typing is just has so much coverage to it that, like, I think maybe, like, four Pokemon in the Pokedex resist that. At oh, most, wow. Which is absolutely ridiculous for a speed run because those Pokemon, they, they hardly ever show up a lot yeah. of the time. 
uh, where it's like, you know, a uh, Pokemon like Dedenne, for example, just a little rat boy, barely, I feel barely shows up. The rest are like, I think, legendaries for the most part, like Tapu Koko. Yeah, that's that. That's always weird to me. Like, I, I think I was watching your Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire video before this, and you're like, get Kyogre. And I'm like, get Kyogre. I'm like, that doesn't sound fun. To, but that's the whole point of the game, to like just get whatever the strongest Pokemon is to beat the game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, another one, though, is Excadrill. Excadrill is just okay. a busted Pokemon with a busted typing in general. And just, yeah. it's so good. Also that, comes that was with super competitive. Dance, that was <laughs> what is it? It also comes with Swords Dance. If, oh, uh, yeah, it does. We have, we have a little pattern going on here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I feel like you were saying it earlier, like how Crystal was one of your favorite games and you no longer enjoy it because of how serious you take the speed run and how much you have to deal with and, and suffer through the game, right? Through the playthrough. Mm -hmm. It no longer becomes enjoyable. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah, I think I think that is why I don't really like a lot of these challenge games or these challenge modes because I I don't want to, like, hate these games, you know? I don't blame you. Like, you know? And I, I feel that's what ROM hacking scene is for, generally, is if you really yeah. want to challenge. Whereas Pokemon itself, I, I don't think it was ever really a challenge. I think we were just way It's too an young. RPG, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's just so much strategy around it that it was bound to be like broken open and people just got so used to it over the years. No, absolutely. That I, I think um, even with a challenge mode that exists, it didn't really raise the bar enough to make it something that stands out to the point where people like look back on it and they're like, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. So do people... Is there a community of people who speedrun the challenge games as well, or, or or the ROM hacks, or the fan games? Yes. Um, so, yeah, there, there's a, I would say there's a speedrun for everything. Um, when do you think this is going to come out, would you say? This, um, a week or two. A week or two? Okay, so I, I think I'll have that video out by then, if not. Um, uh, do you know Pokey Rogue? That came out recently. Yeah, I heard about it. I have not looked into it. Lumi and uh, Soul were telling me about it. I speed ran it. You did. So is it an actual mm -hmm. game? I thought it was like a web browser thing. Yeah, it's it's a web browser, um, but it's also it's speed runnable as it well. Okay. At the same time, yeah, yeah. I, I would say every game is pretty speed runnable, but like, <laughs> you know, I was thinking of um, Pokey Doku, and that actually okay, has I, a. I don't, you can no. speed run that every day no, because can. there's you absolutely could. there's like a time limit to it or like mm -hmm. a <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah you you can speed run anything I'd say uh but there's there's a community full of uh people that just do these Pokemon ROM hacks as speed runs and yeah. I think um with it being such a sort of off season for Pokemon because we're not getting Legends EA till 2025 right oh, that's crazy yeah so far away so crazy yeah, i've seen a lot more people like dip over to these uh rom hack speed runs and just like regular games the speed running just transforms it into like such a different beast yeah and it, it's it's both a, a very interesting magical thing but at the same time you know it it can sometimes just be a kind of disappointing run yeah for i mean a lot you put of, in like, so much time reasons. For it to just be like a, I just I did it. I beat the game, mm -hmm. but it's like nothing impressive, right? That could be disappointing. I I would say it's more so like the the makeup of the game itself does not make for an interesting speed run more than oh okay else sometimes yeah. okay. Um, I guess a a good example of that, in my opinion, would maybe be like Radical Red. Yeah. Where um with the the speed run with the way it is right now, they'll they uh they use like all the cheat codes to be able to level up their Pokemon to like the the limits that they'll uh, listen to them at and then just catch a bunch of Pokemon or something. It's I think it's okay. Yeah. Not my not my cup of tea exactly. And sometimes games end up being like that. Legends Larceus was like that for speed running for me. <laughs> Fun fact, until recently. 
and it just but you, sometimes you just have to take a second look though yeah to really get that perspective what do you think uh pokemon's biggest problem is right now I think one of their I think their biggest problem is definitely like the time constraint and it makes me happy to see that Legend Z A is going to be in 2025 for that yeah. reason in particular. And I, I think with a nice break going on, I think we're gonna see a masterpiece, hopefully. Yeah. It's funny, the popular sentiment is and I don't I don't I don't know the answer, but it is po it's it's a popular understanding that like time limitations is the is the issue with with uh the lack of quality in these in these pokemon games that we get every single year and that makes sense but i i i would imagine the real issue would be like um resources in the amount of people working on these games and the amount of teams that are working on these games right it's kind of like there's a problem and it you either solve it with giving these teams more time or you just expand the teams to get more games I think a lot of people, and I, I'm, I'm bringing this up because I'm trying to check myself even, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think we are kind of spoiled with the amount of Pokemon games we have and complain about the amount of Pokemon games we have. And there's, and I'm not saying you're saying this, but there's a lot of people who are like, take three, four years off. We'll give us a new Pokemon game every four years. And to me, that's like a clear way for Pokemon to just like, just kind of like just peter out and like lose a lot of momentum and fandom Ooh, right yeah. and it's i can so, see that you know what i'm saying and, I, mm -hmm. and I, I think i could definitely see like that it would would be fixed by like just giving it to more people and in in a way i'm kind of glad that they gave the reins to ilka for yeah, i am uh, too bdsp which I, I think is like a, a good good change in a way they took a interesting step with it yeah and I think they could. I think they could do better. As it felt like a time goes on. I totally agree with you. I feel like it, I feel like the Ilka games were a first step. I think they had a vision, and even there was like concept art that that released of what BDSP were gonna look like. The game doesn't look like that. <laughs> like they said, <laughs> you know, they decided to make it look like chibi art instead of like the gorgeous paintings that were the concept art. Um, but it does feel like a first step. It feels like they were like, all right, let's try outsourcing a game. And they did that. And I think the game has a lot of shortcomings and feels very... I think my issues with it are really come down... It, it, it makes me think that the team was like just uninformed by what made Platinum so much better. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. um, like there were solutions to the problems that were in the original games 10 mm. years prior. And then they were like, oh, let's just forget that the solutions are there. So anyways. Now, do you want the speed running perspective of all yes, that? Yes, <laughs> I do. Uh, so BDSP was the most broken game in the last like 10 years or so since like, I think, the, uh, what was it? Hard Gold, Soul Silver, give or take. And that was the the funnest week I've ever had in my life with uh, really glitch speed running. Yeah. So the the developments of that speed run were happening so fast that they would name the route after the day of the week. They were really? like, yeah, it's the Monday route. Oh, we found something new. The Wednesday routes. <laughs> so funny. And that that was easily one of the most fun times I've had with like routing a speed run, being a part of the development. Yeah. And they being part of the uh, development, you're saying you were actually tell me about that. Like, I think in one of your videos, you were talking about like the community coming together to kind of create these routes. That's mm -hmm. what you call them, right? Routes, like, yeah. like whatever path you're going to take throughout the game. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually, yeah, that makes that actually makes sense. So, like, these things are developed by the community, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I've uh, I've been around the speedrunning routing scene since Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. Okay. Um, and so I I've been able to put my own like two cents into the basket with like games like like I said Ultra Moon, yeah, Sword and Shield, Pokemon Let's Go, BDSP, uh, Scarlet and Violet. A tiny bit of Legends EA. Okay. And Legends EA or Legends Arceus? Or Arceus. <laughs> I was like, wow, he's already I got it. I... <laughs> you already got your hands on it. <laughs> yeah, when is this coming out? 
<laughs> in 2025? God, I wish. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I think that's I, yeah. I'm just uh, I'm, I'm a kind of appreciating. I'm realizing and appreciating that like, even though there are shortcomings with these games, some of the chaos that comes out of these games that are like quote unquote you know not very good. Um, there's still I mean, a lot of ways to have fun with it. Yeah, like I, I mean, people still shiny hunt all these games, and they're super mm -hmm. fun. Um, yeah, like I don't know. People people complain about Pokemon games a lot, and for everything that every bad thing about it, there's usually something amazing hidden away in the game as well, right? I think the thing that people get frustrated by, I mean, definitely, yeah, I guess there's a variety of things that people get frustrated by, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I think sometimes it makes for a good speed run. Yeah, that's right. That's just how it changes it. Um, yeah. Like another good example is there. There was a lot of nostalgia for uh, games like Pokemon Coliseum, and yeah. people loved it to death. But it, it feels like more recently that a lot of people are coming out and being like, "No, that was it was just nostalgia. The game's not that great." Yeah, I but agree then I'm with over that. here like th this is my top three speed run of all time because of all the <laughs> yeah, crazy. I need people stuff to like this. Has. Yeah, <laughs> and I think um, I think that's what I would like people to do more is to like open themselves up to these like different perspectives of how to play the game. Yeah, because you know, Nuzlocking just like how Nuzlocking can evolve a game. Speedrunning does it also on like a nice molecular level. Oh yeah, with all these like separate. I mean, I feel like nuzlocking is the same way though. Like people do develop routes, and you have to like spend a lot of time to like build up your team, and to make sure it's like as prepared as possible. And then there's a there's a variable around every corner that could throw you mm -hmm. off, right? Just we we like gotta have a nuzlocke person on because I want to learn more about that as well. <laughs> um, on. <laughs> what is it? Uh, Pichal. Yeah, I mean he's a. Uh, I don't. I don't think I watch his videos, but he's he's got to be one of the top guys, right? Or the top guy. I think the the Nuzlocke guy. I would he's argue. the Nuzlocke guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to have him on. I mean, that'd be a great perspective to have on. Um, so what what are you enjoying about modern Pokemon right now? I would I would say more right now with. When it comes to like Scarlet and Violet, I think this the game is such a mess that it's both it's a good speed run if you don't account for all the messy, laggy stuff yeah. that boggles it down. And it's messy to the point where like it just feels unspeedrunnable in a lot of senses. Oh wow. Because of the glitches? Um, no, they, they keep patching those out instead of fixing yeah. their game. <laughs> oh, you're saying cause like, like, cause like the, the frame rate counts for the timing. Oh, wow. It's, it's inconsistent. It's inconsistent. Your game crashes and you lose three minutes. Wow. We got to the point where we had to save like two hours into our game and reset it just to get the game to run fast enough to speed run a little bit quicker. Wow. And I, it saves time doing that. It's so dumb. That really but is so dumb to think that the it's immersion breaking even in a speed run, right? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. It's and disappointing. People, a lot of people are like, you know, why don't you just get someone to sort of make an auto splitter that gets rid of like the the laggy um what is it? So what an auto splitter is, is essentially it takes these uh, splits, which are essentially the timer. And you have these points in the game where like, let's, let's say gym one, gym two, gym three. It's sort of a checkpoint to where we see how fast we cleared that sort of checkpoint at that given time. And so what an auto, auto splitter has the ability to do is take away the load times of uh certain points in time like whenever you go into a building you'll like load in that building yeah and it'll be able to take that and make it consistent but that's money as well that people have to put into those auto splitters unless they have someone in the community that's like willing to take the time out of their day to make that um sort of programmable and like function properly yeah. Cause it takes a lot of time and effort and 
we don't have that for Scarlet and Violet. And I think in a way that's, it would be somewhat of a solution, but at the same time, I think we're at the point in Scarlet and Violet's life where speedrunning would have a harder time recovering yeah. because of how deep we are and what the the sort of aftertaste of the game has left on us. Yeah. And instead, a lot of people that I know are doing like Pokemon TCG and VGC uh, to sort of like wait over the period of time where like the next game comes out or going back and playing older games at this point. Yeah. Jeez. That reminds me of like, I mean, part of me wants to say like, that's it. I mean, it stinks, but that's like a natural progression of most things. Like even with shiny hunting, right? If you want bet, if you want more odds, more like... If you're doing a really challenging shiny hunt, like there's always the option to buy more consoles, more games, right? To you know, you got the you got 20 DSs set up, right? You're you're doing the you're doing the encounters on all of them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that is like a, you know, I guess you could say it's like a paid advantage, um, but that's the level of an investment, right? Um, mm-hmm. But the def yeah, it definitely sucks. It definitely sucks. Something that I think about a lot is like how I feel really privileged to be 30 years old and just over the course of my life, I've been buying Pokemon games when they're standard price. Right. So when people talk about like, Oh, why do we need a port of Emerald? Like just go play the game. Like what (laughs) I have it. There's a ton of people who don't have it. Right. Like I, like during the pandemic when everyone was buying cards. Yeah. I love this. I don't mind over there, but I bought all of my, I bought games. Yeah. I've got more than you. An entire car. <laughs> That's right crazy. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, price yeah. of a car. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. How much are the 3DS games going for now? Now that the uh, eShop uh, or, or the, the the 3DS shop eShop Have they gone shut in? down. I assume I have they no did. Idea. I assume Not, they went up a little bit. I know the DS games. I mean, those are like hundreds of bucks. I, I think we're at the point where everyone. Um, the homebrew scene has gotten so like expensive that we kind of have to use it um in order to like get a lot of these games to do what they can't do anymore. Yeah. Like I know there's like an online server now that uh because Nintendo just shut down theirs. Yeah. And so like uh I I mostly feel more sad towards like Pokemon Bank and Pokemon um what is it the the transfer thing uh yeah pokemon transporter yeah because like because i have them on my system i don't know if i can still mm-hmm. use them you can um but like for how much for longer yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly right? like yeah that and that's a that's honestly sucks because like yeah what i love about pokemon why it's so cozy is that it's like and listen i'm getting older i'm realizing you can't take it with you right mm-hmm. listen i'm thinking about death but like it's true. It's like growing up, I'd be like, I have all my shinies. I have all these memories. Like every Pokemon was a memory. I name a Pokemon after a memory of a point in my life. And then I look back and I'm like, I still have Pokemon from 15 years ago that are in my current game. Right. Which is like, some people say it's stupid, but it's like a collection like anything else. And I get a lot of fulfillment out of that. And I've separated myself from that a little bit because I've realized there's going to be a point potentially where I can't bring those Pokemon up. You know, I'm not going to say this on record in case anyone at Nintendo wants to sponsor the podcast, but I do think, or what I have considered doing, is uh, capturing a ROM of my save file, so if anything happens to my copy of the game, I still have those memories, I still have those mm-hmm. Pokemon. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, disappointing that, that eventually I won't be able to bring this stuff all the way up. Yeah, that, that's kind of the point where I, I was trying to make in general, was like, you're we're at the point where we have to kind of like save what we can get while like these cartridges last there's a, there's yeah. such thing as like cartridge rot where you're never going to be able to like play that like childhood copy in like maybe yeah 20 years down the line dude that's and yeah even playing it, the game you're talking about just playing the game in general won't yeah, even be even, available yeah, just playing it in general and nintendo or game freak are not really it feels like they're not exactly doing much about it because like it it's been years and we don't have virtual console pokemon games except yeah. for on the 3ds that's yeah. now like dying do you have any hopes that they'll port these games i mean it i don't know i do i, do. I definitely <laughs> yeah. do i 
I would buy them even like separately. Like, yeah, no, oh yeah, take my money, all like fifty, sixty dollars. Yeah, people will say all. people say wishful thinking. They're like, oh yeah, they should just put it all on NSO. And I'm like, first off, no, because that's a subscription no. fee, and then I can lose access to it. It's like I want to download the software, and then just keep just like log, you know, never go online. And the games will just be available on my Switch forever. Because that's another thing I think about it. The fact that I can take my Ruby version and it's the final version. There's no DLC or there's no like, you know, downloadable con uh, software after I plug it in. What do they call it? Like a day one patch, right? Yeah. I can just take it and play it. And it's like the same thing that I played as a kid. That's powerful. And that's not even if you can't even do that in BDSP, right? If you got a fresh version of BDSP, you have to like get the, you have to get the patch. Mm-mm. -mm. Um, there's a way around that. There's actually a way around. Okay. That. So, um, how, how much do you like all of your save data? I love my save data and I haven't saved any of it, but I'm talking <laughs> to someone who knows how to do it. So I got to do that. So if you completely factory reset your Nintendo switch where like, there's no like patches or anything and you have a physical copy of the game, yeah. you can play the original 1.0 of every game. Awesome. Uh, no, no. So I'm saying... Th yeah, that's cool. But what I'm saying is, like, I don't want to play f uh, the original version of BDSP because, like, the music sucks and there's gl there's even more glitches and there's even more... Actually, I guess some people might like that if there's... Because you can, like, clone your Pokemon and stuff. <laughs> some people yeah. like that. Some people like that. But, uh, I don't know. For, yeah, anyways. that Yeah, okay, that's good to know. That you can actually mm -hmm. still get those. That's pretty good. Um. So, yeah. So, I, I could see... Maybe my I'm holding out hope for Gen 10, specifically the 30th anniversary, that they're going to be like 30 years of Pokemon. Here's Gen 1, here's Gen 2, and here's Gen 3. I could see that. I don't see them doing Gen 4. I think what they would do is they, they've already done it. Remake already, another one yeah, where they, you don't have to rely on the cartridge. Yeah, they give us the, the faithful remakes. I could see that. Of the Gen 4 games, of the Gen 5 games. And then essentially we can play Gens 1 through 5 again on the Switch, or at least like the Switch family consoles. Mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what they're doing with like Gen 6 because... With that's true, yeah, and then Gen 6 is basically is the, is the Legend ZA game. Mm. Oh, great. And with Legend ZA coming out, I'm pretty sure if they have like the base decks of X and Y... There's not going to be a single Pokemon that we can't get on the Switch games themselves already. I love that. I, I'm That's pretty really sure, cool. at least. I, I could be wrong, but I think I think we're at that point. Oh, dude, this is sick. That's I'm holding out hope, man. I'm hoping. So, do you think we're gonna get? I mean, there was a lot of. I don't know if you follow leaks and stuff, but like the biggest rumor forever by the person who is credible or was credible or has done credible information before said that we we're going to get Gen 5 remakes. That was like the biggest hype cycle and it never, it, we haven't got it revealed yet. Uh, do you think that's still happening in maybe 2024, like at the end of the year? I I feel like it's inevitable that it will happen down the line. Yeah. And, you know, as a Gen 5 lover, I don't think we need it, but yeah. I, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing what they would do, to be honest. It's, because, like, at the end of the day, I still have my Gen 5 games I can go back to and just play, even if it's, like, terrible. Just I don't think it is they... terrible, though. Like, the original games are great. Oh, yeah, Gen, Gen 5. I, but I mean, like, if the remakes were terrible. Sure. Like, yeah, it's like, it's like, what is the point? It's like, if you're going to remake a game, what is the point? If it's just going to be a, a faithful remake, and maybe this is the issue with BDSP... It's just a port. You're just making a 3D mm -hmm. port of the game. So why are you doing it if it's not even as good as the original? Yeah, a lot of people point to Hard Gold Soul Silver as like the definitive like remake. But I point to Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire as yeah. the the real big point where like they they up the bar, they improved how the characters look, they yeah. added a lot of like development on like how the the gym leaders characterize themselves yeah and then they had just like some cool modern features like they, add, they advanced the plot oh dude oh, you're right the dex nav they is great fixed, they fixed a lot of the backtracking issues as well yeah that's how you do a remake i see but i like the backtracking i actually didn't like that i like the back i didn't mind it 
the backtracking to me as someone who doesn't speed run who takes his sweet time with these games <laughs> it allows me to, it, it, it like when all of these pathways open up to familiar locations it gives you more perspective of the region and it makes you feel like you know like like a real region where it's not there's this one highway route you know in gen 5 i love it but it's a circle right i think uh black 2 white 2 do a better job that unova is a little bit more dynamic and i think hoenn is a is a beautifully dynamic region mm. but Absolutely. um yeah i definitely see where you're coming from no but your i think your point stands i i do think omega ruby alpha sapphire was a great remake but i think i think the issue with that game actually i don't know i was gonna say the art style is not great but that's not true at all even the in-game cheat like like that's the cheap i love i see i think that it's was chibi like and it's good peak, peak chibi right there yeah, 100%. I totally agree. For me, though, the reason why I don't go back to it as much is partially because I have the original games and I like, I like the, I like the pixel art. I like the way it looks. Same. Um, to me, I mean, that's as nostalgic as Gen Two, or I, th I don't think Gen One's that great. Um, <laughs> that's one of the beautiful things about speedrunning, though, is that all of these games are different at that molecular level. Like even uh what is it ruby as opposed to sapphire that ability to catch kyogre over groudon makes it a very vastly different speed run or the fact that you're facing uh magma over aqua yeah. is very vastly different too and so as a as a speed runner you know we don't look at these games as like oh i could play this better version of the game no i could play that game and yeah. get a speed run in that game because it's a different speed run compared to this speed run that was like the original that's that's that is cool and so so you're saying like if someone is speed running sapphire because of the kyogre because that's just the better way to do it mm -hmm. if someone does a speed run of ruby it will be slower but it still presents its own challenges and then is defined as its own speed run game yes okay that's that's kind of oh, cool it's not oh, always about the not length enough. of time yeah. it's about like how are you overcoming the challenges mm -hmm. within it to get the best time? I would say Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire is a better representation of that because not a lot of people are playing Ruby as opposed to Sapphire. Um, I'm playing Ruby right now. <laughs> not a speedrun though. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like the some of these version differences are just so different that they constitute a split in a leaderboard yeah. of a speed run because of like those minor things that actually come out to be like really big things, which That's is why cool. I'm glad like uh, the, the community has evolved so much. We, we used to force everybody to like run on the same leaderboard, but you know, as, as time went on, we've developed as people, we've developed our, how we want to have the speed run represented. And now we have like a speed run for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Ultra, well, not Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because not a lot, not enough people speed run those games <laughs> to warrant a uh, a split in leaderboards. But there would be, I think, if um, you know, people wanted it to be, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try out a speed run at some point. I don't really know how to hit set up. it up. Can you? Yeah, I will. I'll definitely hit you up. Can I? Can I do that offline? Sure. Or does it? Yeah. You just yeah. try to like. You I mean, just you, you just do it like all on your own. You could even make up your own rules. Or How about if, you know? Yeah. Last question yeah. about speedrun specifically is like, because I think what would make it more approachable to me is if I could like speedrun for an hour and then like hit the timer, stop, save, shut it off, turn it back on, play another hour, but like speedrun that next hour. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, do I have to yeah. do the full twelve hours or whatever? really depends on the game yeah because like because if i'm know, not we, playing we also, it i would think the timer stops mm, yeah um yeah it definitely depends on like the game i would say like there are certain instances where like you know a game like hard gold still silver because the time is still like going stuff will be affected in the oh, overworld true that's a good yeah point. like uh j just you get just the cart balls or whatever it might be hmm just as more of an example, though, it's uh, if you start your game on Hard Gold Soul Silver on January 1st, you will get Diamond Dust on. Oh, yes. Uh, what is it? Mount Coronet. Or wait. Mount Silver, Mount Silver. Yeah. 
And so the game will not hail during the red fight. And wow. so if you if you have your game sitting there for too long, it might uh, spring over to the next day and really mess up your speed run by that doing that. Wow. Okay. Oh yeah. Because oh, I was gonna. I was like, wait, the same day? Did he misspeak? No, you beat the game in one day. Is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Never have I done that. Yeah. I, you know, I kind of as a speedrunner, this is just something we're very used to, and we don't really like fully think about like. Wait, we do this in one day, maybe like a few <laughs> hours, you know? I have like three save files, uh, three different playthroughs like ongoing right now that I'm just like working through <laughs> over the course of 2024. <laughs> that brings up a, a f just a, a general funny comment that I always see on these speedrun world records where uh, the mom is like, I'll see you soon, honey. Go have a fun Pokemon journey. Come <laughs> yeah, back you come back at noon. Later. I, I beat the champion, Mom. <laughs> I love love that sort of thing when you, like... That's sort of, intense. When you put it out into, like, reality, what you're actually doing yeah. and what that would actually take if you were in the yeah. game yourself. And there's already so, so many memes surrounding, like, the... the, the, the uh, I guess, like, the, rea yeah, the reality of how you play through a Pokemon game. And the physics of that, and versus what it's portrayed as, like as the in the anime, or like what mm -hmm. it would actually be like, it's right? So like, like uh, I always think of the meme of like Do Duo sp or Do Drio spinning its like heads to fly, like a mm -hmm. helicopter, because <laughs> it has no wings. Um, all right, dude, let's um let's switch it over to the Patreon section with our uh, speed round questions. All right. All right. All right. True. Final question. What is one thing? What is the one thing that you want to see in the next generation? Like what feature anything? I want to see the exact same Legends RCS concept but like better. Yeah. That's exactly what I want. Like okay. Legends RCS in the main series was... game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I mean, I, I think it'd be fine if they like kept it in like the Legends Arceus, but I think like, or like the Legends series, but I think if they take like a lot of like what made that game good, yeah, and then put it in like the Pokemon games, then that would be great. But I think overall, I want to see stability. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Like, yeah, con con inconsistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stability, I consistency, and really fun mechanics. I love it. I love that Pokemon is trying new things, but I, I'm, I'm right on board with you. It's like, keep experimenting, but the output needs to be consistent. Um, yeah, dude. Well, Pulse, thank you so much for being here. It's uh, I'm glad I'm I'm glad we randomly met each other at PAX East. <laughs> um, we got to know each other a little That's bit. Fun. We shared some pizza. That was great. Um, but yeah, man, uh, let the people know where they can find you. Uh, you can plug whatever you want to plug. Uh, I think the, the places that I'm mostly active in, twitter.com slash pulse effects. Uh, and if you want to find out a lot more about like Pokemon speedrunning as an art form, as like a concept in general, I try my best to make these awesome, fun video essays about Pokemon speedrunning at youtube.com slash pulse effects. Yeah. You don't even have to use the at. I have the original domain of do you really? youtube.com slash pulse effect. Yeah, that's how old my account is. Oh, what? Yeah, you can just go straight there without the at. Wait, does mine do that? <laughs> I need <laughs> I that to do that. On, dep definitely depends on how old it is. Because, like, I think you had to be there. I don't think it's old enough. 20... Back in, like, the Let's Go, or Let's Go, uh, the Let's Play era. 2018? <laughs> Not old enough. I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank still, you so I much for being it. here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it dude. It was a really fun time. I'll see ya.